In the wake of another rough session, I'd like to point out the bright spots in this market, which is why tonight I think it's worth noting that Clorox has clearly become one of the kings of the consumer packaged goods space. Since the beginning of the year, Clorox has given you a return well north of 10% with dividends. Procter, down 10%. Colgate's basically flat. Kimberly Clark hasn't done much better. So how is it that Clorox has managed to soar while the rest of the group kind of languishes? Have Clorox's brands suddenly become way more attractive than the comp competition? Is it because more people are buying uh, glad bags, Kingsford's? Hidden Valley Salad Ranch, a salad, a salad dressing, Fresh Step Kitty Litter, Burt's Bees Personal Care, plain old Clorox Beach. I don't know, a bit of some of that, but the truth is Clorox has been able to win because it has a lot less international exposure than its competitors, which means the super freaking strong dollar does much less damage to its sales. But more important, it's incredibly well managed with fantastic marketing, some very exciting R&D that I want to talk about. Now, the company just reported on Monday morning. Once again, Clorox beat the numbers, company earning $1.44. The street was only looking for $1.37, higher than anticipated revenues, up 4% year over year, good growth, much of it coming from the cleaning division, up 9%. Meanwhile, Clorox's gross margins expanded by an incredible 270 basis points year over year. This was a great quarter, hence why the stock has jumped from below 112 to all the way up to 119. And I know some would say, wow, hold on to the stock of a slow-growing uh, company that, that actually has a pricey 25 price earnings multiple. Are we being risky? Let's find out. Let's check in with Ben O'Doherty. He's the relatively new CEO of Clorox, following the retirement of the totally bankable Donald Canals. To get a better sense of where the company's headed, Mr. Dora, welcome to Mad Money. Thank you, sir. Obviously, I had to say Mr. Doerr because we're so used to Donald Canals, and I know you're good friends, and you're doing a fabulous job. But I did want to wish him well and ask you, what kind of hand did Don give you? He gave me a great hand. You know, the way I like to talk about this, Jim, is that uh, he gave me a beautiful train, and that train is rolling down the right track, and now it's up to me to make that train roll down that track faster. So we're investing in an acceleration of growth, but not, a, not just any growth but good growth, and good growth for me is profitable and consistent. Well, let's talk about that because I saw some things this quarter that I just loved. For instance, I'd always been hoping that Burt's Bees, which is a brand that my family loves, that, that could, you could put some marketing money behind that, grow it, and get double digit. It's happening. Burt's Bees has grown 11% last fiscal year, so uh, that's clearly one of the company's growth engines. And there are three growth opportunities. First of all, we're driving awareness and more trial on the businesses that we've already been in. For the first time last fiscal year, we did TV advertising, and it's worked like gangbusters. Right. Second, we're getting into new categories, Jim. Uh, we've made our first foray into uh, lip color by getting into lip crayons and lip shimmers, and we're doubling down on that by getting into lipsticks, an $800 million category where we can make a big difference. And then third, we have the international growth opportunity. We're now in many countries, and we're driving that. So very optimistic about Burt's Bees. We are huge followers of what the millennials like. We call it behavioral change. Burt's Bees fits their sweet spot. It does. And, uh, you know, increasingly we're managing uh, our business, so we're investing in advertising and sales promotion online. More than 30% right, right. uh, of our advertising sales promotion dollars today are in digital and social media. And in fact, today, this morning, we've announced that uh, we're forming a new strategic marketing relationship with Google. And Google will uh, help us uh, send the right message to the right consumer at the right time and measure ROI because we're a very ROI-driven company. So we're close to the Silicon Valley, and we think we can make that a real competitive advantage for us. I'll tell you, the people watching you own those media stocks today are saying, I guess this is what's really happening. Clorox gets it. But you always have been. You've done some great social media because I remember, Don, when he would see where there was flu and was able to get Clorox to where it was by just looking at Twitter. Yeah, today I can tell you that often um, our flu forecast is uh, better than that of the Weather Channel. What we're able to do is track social media. We find out where consumers talk about uh, uh, flu. And then what we can do is we can send a display pallet uh, uh, to a retailer close by so that people get the Clorox disinfecting wipes or the Clorox bleach that they want. You mentioned the wipes. The growth here in wipes is rather extraordinary. I mean, what's happening if this can grow high single digits? What's going on? Yeah, in fact, uh, over the last quarter, uh, Jim, it's even grown double yeah, digits. Yeah, so it's double digit for uh, this quarter. What's happening? And the wonderful thing here really is that household penetration in the wipes category is still only at about 50%. So we have 50% to go. What's happening is that disinfecting and health and wellness continues to be a very relevant trend. But we're also seeing a trend, you mentioned millennials, mm -hmm. uh, that, that we call cleaning in the flow. So what's happening is that people do no longer clean on their hands and knees on a Saturday morning and take the morning off. Today, what they want is those quick hits, those quick five-minute hits. 
uh, at the end of a meal, at the end of a day, at the end of a shower. And that's where wipes come in. They're the preferred product form for that, and we have tremendous innovation. One example is our uh, disinfecting wipes uh, from Clorox with microscrubbers that have been really very successful, so we're growing uh, household penetration and market share in that Well, I, would, I want to talk about innovation because uh, I, I see innovation coming in, of all things, trash bags. Yeah, trash bags uh, has been a real star for us uh, over the last fiscal year. And with the joint venture that we have together with our partners in uh, uh, Procter & Gamble, we've been able to churn out uh, a, a real uh, successful series of innovations. Uh, the last example being our Glad Order Shield with Gain. Yeah. Uh, we call uh, consumers who love uh, a Gain Sense Gainiacs and the Glad Trash Bags. Uh, I'm a Gainiac. Well, there you go. The, the Glad <laughs> Trash Bags with Gain Sense, they've been very successful, so we're gaining market share I'll, on this business. I'll tell well. you the other thing I do. Uh, my mom always told you don't get Clorox, don't get bleach. Well, you always go to Clorox, we didn't call it bleach. Don't get Clorox in your eyes. You, you, you have, you solved it. You've got the pod. We have, well, that's another thing that we're doing. You've got to go with the times. And right now, uh, we're, we're launching bleach packs and we're launching bleach crystals, which give consumers uh, the disinfecting performance uh, that they're used to and that they expect from Clorox bleach in a much more convenient form. Then one last question. I know Donald decided enough with Venezuela. Everyone's getting killed there except for you guys. It's a great move, isn't it? Well, you know, for us, it was the right thing to do. Uh, in our last fiscal year we were in, uh, we lost $25 million. Uh, on a business worth $77 million in sales, and we could not see a way to improve uh, because we didn't get pricing from the government. So we're very strongly focused on doing what's right for our shareholders, and exiting the country was certainly the right thing to well, do for us. That's how you boost cash flow. That's how you return, get the good dividends and the buybacks. That's Clorox CEO Ben O'Dor. Thank you so much, sir. We have money to be back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.